Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 10 of the chapter Chemical Kinetics. Let me now tell you about the half-life of a reaction. Half-life, what is a life, a lifetime? It is a time, it is a time period. And half-life, let us assume that our life is of a hundred years. And therefore, what would my half-life be if I'm going to live a hundred years? What would my half-life be? It would be 50 years. So half-life is of a reaction would be that part, that moment in the reaction or that time that took the reaction to be completed to only half of the amount, only half of the reaction to be covered. So when you have the reactant and initially you only have the reactant and no products. When half of the reactant is used up to form the products, at that time, that time required is known as the half-life period of that particular reaction. So how do we define half-life? Half-life can be defined as the time in which the concentration of the reactant is reduced to one half of its initial concentration. It should be the quantity of the reactant should be reduced to one half and it is represented by T with a subscript half, one by two. That represent, T half represents half-life period. As you know that the rate equation for different orders of reactions are different. Therefore, when you apply, when you calculate the rate constant or T half, that would also be different for different orders of reactions. Because after all, T half is nothing but a period that is T, which is there in the denominator uh, of a rate equation. And in the numerator, you have the difference in the concentration. So the only difference in both of these, uh, of the zero order and the first order, you do not have the second and third order reactions. So for both of these, the T is nothing but it is T half, which means that whatever was the concentration, initial concentration of the reactant R0, R is half of that or we say concentration is half of R0, right? So we know for zero order reaction, the rate is written as R0 or R0 minus R, where R0 or R0 is the initial concentration of the reactant and R is its concentration at any time T. Since T0, that is the initial time was zero, therefore final time gives you the difference of the time. That will give you the rate constant. That is how you calculate the rate of a zero order reaction. Now, if you now apply the half-life period at time t, that is at half-life, when time t is equal to t half, that is how much time is required to reduce the concentration of the reactant to half of its amount. At that time, the concentration of R, that is the final concentration of uh, the reactant would be half of the initial concentration. So we could say it is half of R0. So R can be written as half of R0 and T can be written as T half. And when you substitute these values in this equation, you get K becomes equal to R0 minus half of R0 upon T half. When you simplify this, you take T half here. So what is half-life period? Half-life period becomes equal to R0 minus half R0 would be half R0. So R0 upon 2 and you bring the K down here. So T half becomes equal to R0 upon 2K. So this is the half-life period of a zero order reaction. What do we understand from this? We understand that the half-life period is directly proportional to the initial concentration of the reactant and it is inversely proportional to the uh, rate constant, okay? So the half-life period of a zero order reaction, this is really important, the half-life period of a zero order reaction depends on the initial concentration of the reactant and it is inversely proportional to the value of K. So for zero order reaction, T half is directly proportional to R0 or R0 and it is inversely proportional to K. Now let us come to the first order reaction. For first order reaction, the, the equation, the rate equation is rate constant is equal to 2.303 upon T log R0 upon R. Now we know that at T half, T becomes equal to T half 
and R becomes equal to R0 by 2. Now substituting these values again in this equation we say that K would be equal to 2.303 upon T becomes T half log R0 remains R0 upon R becomes R0 by 2. So when you simplify this, the R0 and R0, you get them and the by 2, the 2 goes up into the numerator. And bring T half here and bring, bring K down here. So when we do that in the next, when we simplify it by rearranging it, we get T half is equal to 2.303 upon K log R0 upon R0 into 2. So R0 upon R0 gets cancelled, you are left with log 2. And the value of log 2 is 0 0.301. So you get T half becomes equal to 2.303 upon K into 0 0.301. And when you solve this, this comes out to be equal to 0 0.693 upon K. It's really interesting to note when we said that the half-life period of a zero order reaction is directly proportional to the initial concentration of the reactant. For a first order reaction, the half-life does not depend on the initial concentration of the reactant at all because the R0 and R0 it got cancelled. Therefore, for a for the half-life period of a first order reaction, it only it is only inversely proportional to the rate constant and it is constant and it does not depend on the initial concentration of the reactant, which is so interesting. So for first order reaction, T half is constant and it is independent of R0, that is the initial concentration of the reactants. Now T half and K from this equation, that T half is equal to 0 0.693 upon K. If you know one of these two, either T half or K, you can calculate the other one because it's a very simple equation. So T half and K can be calculated from each other. Like if you know one of them, the other can be calculated by the use of this equation. So this was half-life of a reaction. Now I'll solve two uh, solved examples of your textbook before finishing this video. Give me a moment to write down the questions. This is question 4.7. It is the solved example. A first order reaction is found to have a rate constant K is equal to 5.5 into 10 to the power minus 14 per second. You have to find half-life of the reaction. We know that T half is equal to 0 0.693 upon K. This is the equation for half-life of a first order reaction. So K has been given to us and 0 0.693, so T half is to be calculated. T half would therefore be equal to 0 0.693 upon 5.5 into 10 to the power minus 14 per second. So do you see per second, the second is in the uh, denominator. So this would come in the numerator as seconds and T half is actually time which makes sense that time when you are giving the when you're solving something for time the unit that you should get should be of time which would be a which would be in seconds so when you solve this what do you get you get 1.26 into 10 to the power 14 seconds 1.26 into 10 to the power 14 seconds is your answer very simple the next question is, question 4.8, this also is your solved example. You have to show for first order reaction, again for first order reaction, time required for completion of 99.9% .9 of the reactant is 10 times of T half. You have to show that for the first order reaction, the time required for the completion of the reaction to 99.9% .9 is 10 times that of T half. So, you do, let us say the time required for 99.9% .9 of the reaction is T. And T half we already know is equal to 0 0.693 upon K. This is something that we already know. Now, let us calculate what is the equation. What is the equation? For a reaction of first order, um, K is equal to 0 0.2.303 upon T log R0 upon R at a time T. 
okay or just r now what is rt rt is that time, that concentration where 99.9 percent .9 of the reaction has taken place which means 99.9% .9 of the reactant has been used. So at this point, that is at time T, what would be the concentration of the reactant? The initial concentration was R0. So R would be equal to R0 minus 99.9 .9 upon 100 of R0. You agree? It would be 99.9% .9 of R0 has been used up and from R0, if you subtract this, what would you be left with? So you would be left with, so you get R0 minus, this would become 0 0.999 R0, right? And if you take R0 common here, you'll get it as 1 minus 0 0.999 R0 would be the concentration, right? Which would be equal to 10 to the power minus 3, uh, this should be the right, of R0, right? So let us substitute this value in this equation. K would then be equal to 2.303 upon T log R0 upon 10 to the power minus 3 R0. R0 and R0 get cancelled. So this becomes, now let us take T here. T becomes equal to 2.303 upon K log of 10 to the power minus 3 would become 10 to the power 3, right? This would come uh, to the numerator, so this would become equal to 10 to the power 3. And this would be equal to 2.303 upon k. T would be equal to 2.303 upon k into 3, which would be equal to, if you multiply this by 3, what will you get? Uh, 6.909. 6.909 upon k. Now, the question is that you have to show that half-life, uh, I mean this time, that is time t, is 10 times half-life period. So, we will write t divided by t half. If you divide it by t half, you will come to know how many times is it. So, what is t? t is 6.909 upon k divided by so if we write divided by i can divided by t half and how how much is t half t half is 0. Point, is 0. 0.693 upon k i just the k would go up here so the k and k would get cancelled you get be left with 6.909 upon 0 0.693 and when you solve this this do you see this is almost 10 times so this would be approximately 10 times more than this so this shows that t is actually that the t and what is t t is the time required to consume 99.9% .9 of the reactant so when 99.9% .9 reactant is used the time t is 2.303 upon k into 3 which is 6.909 upon k and t half is is 0.693 upon k and when you divide the two you come to know that it is equal to it is actually 10 times the half-life period so with this i'll wind up this video i hope you understood what i tried to explain today and if you did please give it a thumbs up i like the encouragement and uh, subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends please spread the word among any students that you know who may need help in chemistry and thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.